The Plymouth colonists would never have survived in the new land without the help of the local native Indians, who greatly outnumbered them. Those Indians, known as the Wampanoag, helped the settlers, seeing them as possible allies in wars against other Indian tribes in New England. The Indians were generous and hospitable. No one went hungry in an Indian village unless they were all starving. Indian families had very little to steal, so there were no thieves. No one locked a wigwam, and they did not fence in their property. The English were notorious among both some of the other colonial powers and among historians for their love of fences, for their belief that fencing in your property was the most important way of establishing it as legally your own. This notion of property, this notion of land and of ownership was completely alien to the Indians. The colonists appointed themselves to be the judge as to who needed what land and how much. In the words of the resolves of the town of Milford, Connecticut, written in 1640, Voted that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Voted that the earth is given to the saints. Voted we are the saints. While this declaration seems arrogant in defense of the colonists, they usually tried to buy land from the natives but the Indians usually misunderstood the land contracts. The Indians were far more interested in being able to use the land for farming, for hunting, for fishing, than in owning the land. When the Indians sold land to the English in the early days of colonial settlement in the Americas, it's much more likely that they thought that they were allowing the English to use the land for a certain period of time for a certain amount of money. The leader of the Wampanoag tribe was Massasoit. He and other leaders of his tribe, like Squanto and Samoset, were friendly to the settlers. Surprisingly, some of the Indians could speak English. Squanto and Samoset uh, clearly did speak English, and Squanto, we know, had spent considerable time in England, I mean in Europe. He had been kidnapped by a, a, an unscrupulous English ship captain named Thomas Hunt had been sold into slavery in Spain and somehow, we don't know how, made his way to England and a New England company that was not associated with the Pilgrims uh, that was trying to sponsor colonization and Squanto made contact with these people and was brought back to New to England. Squanto helped make the peace treaty between the Indians and the colonists. He and others of the Wampanoag tribe taught the settlers how to plant Indian corn and grow other crops. Samoset, we think, had probably learned English from fishermen in Maine, because there were fish colonies, summer colonies, all through that region by this time. The first Indian they saw was Samoset, and he, you can imagine their surprise when he walked up to them and said, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 